Well, we are well into October 2020, and lately I've been turning a few Christmas ornaments. And about a week or two ago, I did a demonstration for our local club, the Yellowstone Woodturners, on a birdhouse ornament. I'll show you some of those pictures, but today I'm going to make a bell and I'm going to make a handle that's separate from the bell. And uh, anyway, let me readjust my camera and I'll show you what I'm doing. Merry Christmas. All right, now a number of years ago, I got a bargain box full of different burl wood and this piece was in there and I have no idea what it is, but I think it's going to be pretty cool from what I can tell. So this is going to be my handle. And I should uh, kind of re-emphasize that my handle is going to be separate from the bell part. So let me put a tenon on this end and I'll reverse this and we'll see what kind of wood this is here. All right, now I had to recenter this a little bit. This whole piece is kind of curved. All right, now I've decided this is a pretty simple spindle project. And this piece of wood I'm using is a little bit too small for these chuck jaws. So I made, whoop. <laughs> I've made a, a smaller tenon on that that I'm going to use uh, for my pin jaws. So I'll get a different chuck here. And that's really all the uh, support I need. I'm probably not going to turn this without the tail center brought up. Maybe a little bit towards the end just to finish off that, uh, that part of my handle. Tighten this down really well. There we go. That should do it. I'm going to turn the lay speed down. And this is a good way to Establish your center very slowly on that. There we go. All right. I'll find my spindle roughing gouge. Get my face shield on and we'll get this thing turned down to round. Now I can tell right now that there's some uh, really, really cool figure going on here. I'm not sure. This could just simply be maple. There's some ripple and all kinds of stuff like that in here. Uh, let me finish up rounding this over. And I am turning about 1500 RPM. I'm going to take a little bit of my citrus solvent, put a little bit of moisture on there. Take a look and see what this uh, wood looks like. Yeah, that is going to be really, really pretty. You know, this actually reminds me of cherry. And these black marks here, they're not exactly spalting, but uh, in cherry you get something called pitch pockets. And that's what that reminds me of. But anyway, it's going to be really pretty. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use this entire length of 
of wood. I might cut it off here. Have a little project down here because that wood is, is just so pretty. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a tenon on this end that will go on the top of my bell. Now I have my camera repositioned for the end of this. This part right here is going to go into the top of the bell. And I'm going to put a tenon on that. And I'm going to make that tenon 11 sixteenths of an inch. And I've got that set on my vernier calipers. So I'm going to get that in the ballpark. And then I'm going to show you an old woodworking trick. Okay. All right, I'm going to shut my lathe off and show you something. It's a really good way to size up a a tenon, and you've probably already seen this. This is a, a box full of templates of different sizes. Okay, there's an inch and three eighths and all different kinds of dimensions. And I've got a hole in the center and I've got a radius on the end. So what I can do is I can size my tenon while I've still got my tail center up. So this is the one I'm going to use, and I'm using it because it's the smallest one in there. It's 11 sixteenths. All right, let's see here. So I put that on there. I can kind of get that in the ballpark right there. And I'm going to take my tail center away. And with the hole that's in the center of that, and of course I use the same drill bit to drill this hole and to drill this part, creating that radius. Okay, I'm going to turn my lathe on. Not real fast. And you probably can't see it, but I've created a little rub mark on there. And I'll just make that a little bit larger. Alright, now something else I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, this center out of here. I don't really like that kind of a cone center. I'm going to put a more delicate center in there. Uh, bring up my tail center. Okay, that lined up pretty well. Take my block of wood and just kind of see. All right. A little bit more of a rub mark on there. I'm going to turn my lathe off. Take my tail center away. And we'll just check this a little bit more accurately. All right. The tenon is still too big. And that's a good thing. Just need to fine tune that just a little bit. And when I get uh, ready to connect this to the bell, I don't really need a lot of depth there. Probably an eighth of an inch. All right. Check her one more time. All right. It's a little bit tight, but I think that'll work. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to bring my tail center up again, 
and profile my handle for my bell. I've got a little flat area right here that will contact the top of my bell. Alright, I think the rest of the way I'm going to use a skew chisel because I'll get the, the cleanest cut possible on this. Alright, now I've done a little bit of work off camera, mostly with a spindle roughing gouge. And I'm going to part this off right in here. I could possibly use this little bit right here for a a uh, lid on a little container. Alright. Not quite ready to part that off. I'm going to take a skew chisel and do a little bit of fine tuning and making that surface as good as I can. It's a little bit uh, I don't know, sketchy, if that's the right word. Grain's growing three different directions and I can, I can feel, I don't know, the undulations of that ripple grain. To see if I can improve this surface. I am turning at 1800 RPM. Getting a little bit of vibration on there. Alright, now sometimes something just develops and as I was turning this, I thought, I'm going to make a captured ring right here. I've got it just about ready to part off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some friction polish on there because I've got this sanded, the outside of the ring, and I can't do this very well later. Sort of have to do it now. Get that in there. All right, we'll buff that in just a little bit, and I'll show you my captured ring tool. This is a, a repurposed Robert Sorby tool, some sort of a tool, I don't know. So I can use this in this orientation for the right side and I can turn it around. It's kind of flat on the top, on you know this top and that top if you will. So all right, let's uh, Release this ring. Oh, look at that. That didn't take much. Now I'm just taking my captured ring tool, kind of touching up the bottom of that. That'll be pretty cool. All right. There, have a little tiny detail tool. All 
I got to be careful I don't get in there and mess up my ring. I can use some sandpaper and just clean up the very bottom of that. That's not too bad. I like it. Well, I thought I would show you just a little bit of the finishing process. Doing a little bit of sanding on this, and I probably sand up to 400 or 600 grit. You'll notice I've got my Trend Air Helmet, and out of view is my dust collection hood. Here's a close-up. I won't show you too much of this, because it's yeah, not too exciting. And what I'm using here is a... Uh, friction polish, and I go back and forth. I think I put um, a little bit of lacquer on this later on and buff it out with some Triple E. And getting around that captured ring is a little bit difficult, but uh, anyway, I'm very happy with the results of this handle for my bell. All right, I used a little bit of lacquer on this, and I finished up with... Uh, an application of Triple E. So I'm ready to work on the bell part of this project. All right, it's ready to part off my handle. And you'll notice that on the very top of the handle is a little bead. And eventually I take that off because I really don't like it. And you'll see that in some pictures later on. There we go. I like the captured ring that's always fun to turn and I'm ready to move on to the bell. Okay I've got the bell part of my project ready to put in the chuck jaws. This is a piece of big leaf maple and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one or two layers of veneer in here as an accent. So let me put this into my shark jaws. Tighten this down. I'm going to bring up the tail center to help me line this up. Tighten it down real good. So this section in here will be the length of my bell. It's going to be a little bit long, but I've got a long handle. And this will just be for another project. Now I'm going to put a tenon on this end right here because I think I'm going to have to reverse this at some point. All right, I've got a little bit of uh, veneer working over here, clamped together, so I'm going to take this apart See what I got. And this is going to be a little bit of an accent for my bell. Now this is just some, some parchment paper that I had in there in case I had any glue squeezing out. So that looks pretty good. All right, nice and flat. So I've got some mahogany, and on the inside I've got some lighter colored maple in there. All right, now I've decided to use only one layer of an accent, uh, I think towards the bottom of my bell. So here's a piece of my veneer. Dark on the outside, light on the inside with some maple, and it's plenty big. And I'm going to part this off and glue it in before I really do any profiling on this. Here's a picture of a bell. And that's uh, loosely what I'm going to uh, copy. Handle that I've already done. The bell shape with a little uh, inlay detail down there in this area. All right, now I have to design my bell according to the dimensions of my, my blank, all right, which is exactly what I've got on this piece of paper. All right, the dimensions of my blank are 
three and a half long, and the diameter uh, it's uh, about two and seven eighths in that neighborhood. So I've got those dimensions on this piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out with a pair of scissors uh, roughly to the shape of the bell that I want in my project. So let me go off camera real quickly and I'll do that. And I'm just going to fold this piece of paper in half. So when I unfold it, it'll be a perfect bell shape. All right, here's my bell shape cut out on a piece of paper. And later on, I can certainly alter the shape of my, uh, my blank if I don't like it. And this is just kind of a rough shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that uh, inlay someplace down in this area right here. All right, someplace like, like there. So anyway, first thing I'm going to do is part this in half and prepare each surface for the glue up. And I'm not going to do any profiling at this point on my bell blank. I'm going to bring my tail center up, find a good parting tool. All right, now I'm getting near the point where I'm going to part that off, so I'm going to take my, my tail center away so that uh, section down here doesn't get jammed in there. Now I can tell by the sound that I'm just right there and all I got to do is just take that off. All right, now I've got some pretty distinctive grain on this. And when I glue this up, I want to certainly line my grain up. But just to make sure that I do line that up, I'm going to put some marks on here. Put a couple pencil lines on there. And I can line that up when I glue it. Now I'm going to take a scraper and just lightly touch this area right here. I don't have to have this all flat all the way down through here, just the area on the outside where I'm gonna uh, profile my bell. Now I'll take a straight edge on here and just kind of kind of check this out. I think I'm pretty close. I'm going to do one more thing here to make sure that this area is flat. Now, just to guarantee that I'm flat right there, I've taken a piece of sandpaper. I think that's actually 320 grit on a, on a flat little block of wood. And I've just gone over that. And uh, I think that is spot on. Yes. All right, let me proceed. Now what I have to do is do the same thing to the other uh, corresponding section. And that's why I put a tenon on there. So I'll put this in there and flatten it. And then I'm going to put my, my glued up bit of veneer in there like that. All right. Let me do that off camera. Pretty simple. I uh, will get back to you. All right, I am ready to glue up my bell blank. I've got my little round of veneer. And on the outside of that is some mahogany. 
All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit of dark sawdust into my glue mixture. All right, and what that's going to do is it's going to help me fill any voids. There we go. That may occur. Put a little bit of this sawdust in here, and uh, I don't know if I got any gaps. It'll it'll help fill those. So I'm going to mix this up. Slime this on here. Yeah, that'll work. Give my piece of uh, veneer. Okay, stay there. Now here's the other half of my bell. Okay, and I'm going to just put some glue on that. There we go. Back the camera off just a little bit. And uh, maybe you can see what I'm doing here. So here's the other part of my my bell. And I think you can see the um, the sawdust in there has made that a little bit darker. All right, I'm going to just put this up here and kind of slide it around, make sure I get a good coating on everything, all my sections. Uh, that'll work. Okay, now I drew some pencil lines on there, so I've got to line those pencil lines up right in there. All right. Yep, we're slipping. Bring my tail center up as a clamp. All right, and make sure I'm sticking out proper distance all the way around on this. All right, there's my pencil lines. And lock her down and put some pressure on this all the way around. Make sure I've got a little bit of glue squeezing out. I think that'll work just fine. And all i got to do now is wait and let that dry for an hour or so, and I can probably start profiling this. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of hollowing to begin with on my bell. I'm going to kind of go back and forth from the inside to the outside. First thing to do is drill a center hole, kind of establish a depth in there. Now the first thing I'm going to do is establish my rim right here. And I'm going to take this uh, particular gouge. It's a little bit of a ray key knockoff. Long wing on both uh, sides. Now, I have established a little bit of a shoulder right here and a recess, and that will be for reverse chucking this later. And we'll probably see that later on. I'm going to continue to hollow this out, and I probably won't show you all of that boring process because it's uh, not exciting.
All right, now here's my original little paper cutout of my bell. So I'm going to go back and forth from the inside to the outside. I can't do all of the inside or all of the outside at once. So I've just kind of got to go back and forth. I'm going to take a very small spindle gouge. And this area here has got to go way, way down. So. So this area right in here has got to be kind of a high point. take a negative rake scraper make this transition from this point to this valley down here Okay, I've got my bell sanded, and I've got a coat of lacquer on there, okay? Fairly thin, and I'm going to reverse it so I can work on the top of this, right there. Now, while I had this in this position, I went ahead and drilled all the way through to the top with a drill bit that would correspond to my tenon on my handle. All right, it's going to fit. All right, so I need to find some chuck jaws that will fit that, and these might just work. And I will bring my tail center up for a little moral support. Find my shoulder and just tighten that. Nip it up just a little bit right there. Okay, let's turn it on. Oh, very good. All right, so I'm bring my tail center up, finish off the top, and I think I'll put my bell together and show you the finished product.